<laughs> Before we actually start tonight, just let me say that some greasy little bleeders in for one hell of a shock. <laughs> because tonight, necrophiliac, ex-pimp, one-time grave robber, a man who, believe it or not, just for the sheer challenge, started his own leper colony <laughs> in Bournemouth. <laughs> but fate and yours truly finally caught up with him here tonight in this dingy backstreet massage parlor. <laughs> and this man, undisputed king of Soho Vice, should be arriving through that door in a minute. Now, don't give the game away because he thinks he's coming here for a quick massage. <laughs> Just bear with me for, for one minute while I make myself inconspicuous. <laughs> I just hope the little turd's not being tipped off. No, no, he's not been tipped off because I've just been informed that he is, in fact, not going to arrive. <laughs> and after six months of back-breaking bloody research, <laughs> the stevious little bastard has given us all the slip. <laughs> so we're going to have to abandon this is your life and transmit our standby show, Cool It, starring Phil Cool. Well, here it is. <laughs> used to all this glamour. I'm more used to working in a very run-down, neglected, socially deprived area of Britain. It's the bit between Watford and Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just been, I've just been done a gig uh, at a place called St. Barabbas's Catholic Club. <laughs> used to be St. Barnabas, but the vandals have changed all the letters right now. <laughs> But I must say, they made a wonderful job of the book's fizz poster. <laughs> <laughs> well, I came out of the place and, of course, my car... ..hadn't been touched. <laughs> it's a Morris Minor Traveller, you see. I mean, the nastiest vandal on earth wouldn't harm a Morris Minor Traveller because it's, it's got the face of pure innocence. Little round headlamps for eyes, shrubby cheeks for mud guards, little grill at the front for a mouth. All it needs is for an arm to come out the side and go. <laughs> Suppose I could have done worse, I could have got myself a Volkswagen Beetle, the people's car, commissioned by Adolf Hitler. No wonder it looks like that. And the rent Japanese cars are very popular. I don't know why. Have you seen a Datsun head on? <laughs> anyway, I set off and I'm driving down the road. And I develop a loose connection in one eye. <laughs> it's on the blink. Suddenly it goes out. 
500 yards up the road, there's a young copper lurking in a shop doorway. <laughs> <laughs> Just finishing off a bag of pork scratching. <laughs> the nearest thing you'll ever get to cannibalism. <laughs> and he leaps out in front of me and flags me down with his torch. Turns out he's a young cockney lad and he sent him up north of Watford for, for a bit of hard training. Here! You found you got one yard working. Can you not afford him out of bar or something? <laughs> How do you damn it drives around with one yard working? Here, let's have a look at you. <laughs> so he comes over, shines his torch through my side window. Yeah, that all makes sense to me. You are a dummy. <laughs> Do you realise you're a dummy, son? Because that's what you are, a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> what could I say? <laughs> I guess I am a dummy. <laughs> Yes, I I'm a dungy. I suppose I must be a dungy. <laughs> I didn't always used to be a dungy, you know. <laughs> I, I used to be a policeman, but I'm going straight now. <laughs> Cheer up, constable. Ever swine gun. <laughs> swine gun? I'll give you swine gun. Wind your window down and let's have a look inside this old little mobile fungi factory you're driving. <laughs> so I winds my window down, he sticks his head in and starts shining his torch all round. <laughs> Suddenly he sees the mascot on my interior mirror. <laughs> <laughs> a little copper dangling from a noose. <laughs> Drive over a bumpy road, it goes. <laughs> 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 and you know yourselves, if you've been drinking and someone else hasn't, they can pick you out a mile off right. Suddenly he says, Been drinking, have we? And he sticks his face right into mine. Have you ever tried talking like that? I just had a couple of shandies. <laughs> You're getting bored of couple of shandies. Your eyes are swimming round like goldfish. But I'm not going to take you downtown because I'm in a good mood. It's my birthday. I'm 19. <laughs> I just want to warn you. Do you realise you're coming down a one-way street? So I'm only going one way, pal. <laughs> pal, pal. Honey, pal, don't call me. Pal, pal, what do you think I am? It's in a dog meat. I'm sorry, chum. <laughs> Fancy the police treating me like that, eh? It's just no gratitude whatsoever. I mean, the number of times I've helped them with their inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm cheering you up a little bit. <laughs> I mean, there's so much depression knocking about these days, isn't there? I was seeing people in Birmingham on a Saturday afternoon, aimlessly wandering around the bull ring, loaded down with shopping bags. <laughs> oh, why do I live in Birmingham? Dying is the 
only thing I've got left to look forward to in Birmingham. <laughs> Who's going to save us from nuclear catastrophe? Will Ronnie Reagan save us? I'm not so sure about him, you know. It always seems to me to adopt that search me look. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Honest. Uh, search me. <laughs> People of America. Well, uh, by the year Grecian tooth. <laughs> by the year 2000, uh, well, I'll, I'll be 98 years old. Well, uh, I just hope I'm still in office. After all, I'm only a mere boy. Uh, only recently celebrating my 74th birthday. 74 today, 74 today. Got the jewel key of the war. Never turned on a war before. I can't see it really, no, no. There's only one man in this entire universe can save us. Victor Kayam. The American shaver salesman. <laughs> Hello, I'm Victor Kayan. <laughs> I thought the result of a nuclear war between Russia and America would be such a close shave. <laughs> but I went out and bought the earth. <laughs> and if you don't like me as your new world leader, you get your money back. <laughs> What have you got to lose except your future? <laughs> no. You know, <clears throat> scientists reckon that the northern hemisphere is going to get it first. And if that's so, there might be a, a mass exodus to the southern hemisphere. And the continent most people probably choose is Australia. Tucked neatly and safely down under. <laughs> but if any of you go to Australia, you might wish you'd have stopped up over and got blown to bits. <laughs> it's a strange place, Australia, I'll tell you. Yeah, I, uh, I met my wife in Melbourne. I said, what the bloody hell are you doing here? <laughs> It's a well-known fact that the average Australian male is second to none in the world when it comes to subtlety and foreplay. He's sort of goes, uh, right, brace yourself. do eventually get to Australia, the first thing you will notice is it's a continent devoid of all mammals. It's full of marsupials. And one particular marsupial is the Rolfosericus. <laughs> Funny little things, he's sort of got hurry top lip, hurry chin, I'll do one for you. Top lips they've got as a roll for Harry Right? Hurry chins. <laughs> and they never go anywhere without a pair of glasses because they've got very, very poor eyesight. Because they're always in. Well, I'll tell you that some other time. <laughs> Hi, Cobbers. <laughs> I just came up from down under. 
to, uh, to sort of promote to sort of promote my new single. <laughs> First record since two little boys, and then. Uh, it's a Paul Simon song, right? Yeah, first sung by Art Garfunkel. But I tried to give it that more Australian flavour, right? <laughs> and it's a bit of a weepy, so get your chunderags ready, right? <laughs> Here goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you're weary, you're feeling small. <laughs> when tears are in your eyes, Did you like it? Of course you like it. Yeah. <laughs> you happy? <laughs> happiness, you know. I think job satisfaction has got a lot to do with happiness. I mean, I like doing this job, and great, but uh, I've done all kinds of jobs in my time. I left school and uh, started working at Layla Mortis for about a year and a half, making the beds for the night shift. <laughs> <laughs> I was on bonus as well, tucking them in, tea and biscuits, you know, <laughs> tea and a glass of the lot. <laughs> yeah. And then, I, then I, uh, I eventually went into show business. Worked with Ian Jury for six months. I was his choreographer. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a cushiest number in the world. Lighting engineer for orchestra maneuvers in the dark. <laughs> Did nothing. <laughs> but you know, this job's great, but if I couldn't do it for some reason, if my voice went a bit bad or something or whatever, I think my second choice in jobs would be photographing fish. <laughs> Jack Custard's done it, why can't I? <laughs> but if I did it, I'd have to take my wife with me, you know, and it would be like Hans and Lottie Haas all over again. The husband and wife team of yesteryear. You know, it's a fact with all these Underwater photographers, including Hans and Lottie, as soon as they get under the waves, they start talking in this sort of half-baked French Scandinavian accent. <laughs> you must have noticed, as soon as they get under the water, they're off. <laughs> on the ocean bed, where Murph divers <laughs> from all over the world come to dive by the Murph. <laughs> A very tropical sponge. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> And now the latte and I are swimming through this warm, shallow plankton soup. <laughs> we frolic with a couple of groupers.
Latte almost drowned three times. And that's why well, the big dog full of water. <laughs> But now, Lotte and I swim over the edge of the coral reef and plunge into deeper, darker, colder water. <laughs> and we see before our cameras the entrance to a dark, eerie, ghost-like cave. <laughs> Lottie goes in first because I am frightened. <laughs> and as we maneuver down these narrow underwater passages, uh, there is never much room for the equipment. And in such circumstances, <laughs> Lottie always seems to manage to stick her big fat on them in my face. <laughs> These little bubbles, you see, drift. <laughs> Make me wonder whether one of Lottie's horses is punctured. <laughs> But now the strong tropical current spews Lottie and I out onto a flat, lifeless sandy bottom. And we see before our cameras the strangest sight we have ever encountered in our oceanography. A poor, unfortunate prison of the deep. He is a completely unrecognizable. Covered in a cocoon of crustaceans, with his feet entombed in a solid concrete. <laughs> See how this poor bugger. <laughs> hauntingly dances a two and throw in the strong tropical current. <laughs> I wonder who the poor burger is. <laughs> Wait, Lottie. He has a bracelet jingle jangling around his rotting wrist. <laughs> I shall attempt to read it. <laughs> Keep still. <laughs> it is a camera. And now, as I rub the sediment of time, <laughs> Is my scabby little tub? A name starts to appear before our cameras. Hmm? Holy mackerel, In the name of God! <laughs> Look who this poor bugger is! Are you still alive in there? <laughs> 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 you thought you'd come here to photograph. <laughs> Hands in Lockie's house, this is your life. <laughs>